Hello. Hello and here we are. Hello. I am Brooke, the oyster traveler. This whole trip is about last summer, 2022, us going Dungeness crab fishing out west in the Aleutian Islands of beautiful Alaska. I've been taking you through the journey. I've been taking you through the fishing. I've been showing you some of the, the coolest stuff that we've seen and today's episode is no different. Oh, by the way, if you haven't liked yet, please hit the little little thumbs up right there or or hit the thumbs down you know and if you have not subscribed and if you want to subscribe i highly suggest that you do because we're learning about alaska and we're seeing some fun stuff along the way and we're just here to have fun and learn together right so for this episode i'm actually going to talk to you guys about a few different things here we saw a beached whale, right? The humpback whale that washed up on the shore. That was absolutely crazy. And the best part about that was that so many bears showed up to feed on this humpback whale. I'll get more into that in just a second. Next, during the month of June and in the last episode, we actually started to see more of the sockeye fishermen that were fishing with a gill net or with a seine net out out in Alaska, right? So another part of that that I also wanted to get into a little bit was the tenders, right? So what, what are the tenders? You know, what are the tender fishermen do? I, I had no idea about this before and I thought it was really interesting. So I'm gonna include that here. We also went on another amazing beach day. And then we're finally coming in to King Cove, Alaska, and we're gonna offload our crab. So we have quite a good, a good episode in store today. I'm super excited to take you guys through it. Let's just take it from the top, right? This was interesting. I think it was about June 19th. We were fishing and we were gonna anchor up for the night and we saw this humpback whale. Actually, we saw a ton of bears on the beach. That's the first sign that something's going on, right? So we saw all these bears on the beach. I took the camera out because it was too windy to send the drone up. So here's a little bit of footage of just my handheld camera on the boat. It's really hard to film on the boat because the boat is always doing this. So even with a gimbal, even with a stabilizer, the footage is never that good. So if you are planning on being a filmmaker out on the water, you definitely need to watch out for that. We saw all these bears about June 19th and you can see them all right here. You know, I mean, they're just, they're everywhere. And you can't even believe, you know, how far they've come from. Coastal brown bears in the area can travel about 80 to 90 miles a day. But it's pretty amazing how far they travel for food and they have a wicked sense of smell. So all throughout the summer, you know, we're fishing, we're, we're going on our adventures during our time off, a little bit of time off that we had. Just hills and water. What do you think about this place, Gary? Everybody should see this. It's like, it's like man has never been here before. It's so incredible. And then we're just constantly seeing these bears. You really learn about a creature when you can really see it all the time. So we probably saw it for like a good two weeks consistently. And then after that, it was kind of sporadic. The whale started to get a lot more deteriorated. You know, after a while, you can start to see the, the backbone right here. And I was just looking up the other day, how thick is humpback blubber? Because as you can see, the size of this whale in comparison to the grizzly bears is huge. And so, but I did look up how thick their blubber is because that's what the bears were feeding on a lot was the blubber so they can have that for the winter for themselves, right? So the average fat cap of the, of the humpback whale was like six inches. I think that this is about six inches right there. We got to see mamas and babies and all the different, you know, it was so interesting to see how the different bears uh, responded to each other around the whale. So as you can see right here, there's like a mom and some cubs that are just kind of waiting on the hillside and they're actually waiting to feed. And there's other alpha males that are in the area and whenever they're there, they eat their first. Another thing I thought was pretty cool was that a mom and babies, uh, they were scared off by another mom and babies. And so there's even a pecking order within the moms and babies, which I thought was really interesting. So I never thought that there would be so many bears out there, but there was. Oh, and then another thing, I was starting to read this Alaska book and now I'm about halfway through it. And this island that we're on, 
as you can see, there just seems to be absolutely nothing here, right? And that's like so many parts of Alaska. You just go on and on and on. And so many times you just don't see anything and you don't see anything. And you think that no one has ever been there, right? But as I was reading in, the, in this Alaska book, there have been so many people that have gone all over Alaska and they've built villages and the villages have either been, you know, torn down or, or they've left and you know all these explorers like Captain Cook. Captain Cook was a badass explorer and in 1778 he along with two ships traveled and mapped the Alaska coast all the way up from Nootka Sound in British Columbia Canada to the Bering Strait including and naming the Cook Inlet in Alaska and much more as you can see here in this chart. Or uh, La Perouse, we, we talked about him a few episodes back, the Frenchman. Jean-Francois de Galope Comte de La Perouse, or something like that. A French naval officer and explorer in 1786, he charted some of Alaska, mainly the southeast, and he was the first one to name Latouille Bay, Port de Francais which means the French port, after he unfortunately lost over 20 of his men to the treacherous waters on the incoming or outgoing tide into deep Latuya Bay. The name did not stick. There was another captain named Henry Allen. This guy was a super badass too, Major General Henry Turman Allen, best known in Alaska for exploring about 1,500 miles around some of the roughest terrain around the Copper River. His expedition has been compared to that of Lewis and Clark, and there's some really badass stories of him traveling all the way up the canyon and like almost dying, and then he was saved by the run of salmon that just happened to be running up the river. It saved his men from starvation. So this guy, super cool guy. You know, they've been all around Alaska, not to mention the Russians who originally first had Alaska and sold it to us for basically pennies on the dollar. That's another matter. So anyways, if you look around here and you're just like, oh my God, no one's ever been here ever. According to this book, and I'm gonna put it right here in case you're interested right here, it's a really awesome book. I'm not finished yet. I'm about halfway through, but but um, pretty interesting to learn about the history of Alaska. It is very intense as far as the fur trade, you know, the killing of the seals or the sea lions. And yeah, that's, that's for another day, I guess. But it, it is extremely fascinating and hopefully we can learn from history and not make those same mistakes twice. On to the salmon fishermen now. So as I was telling you before, the salmon fishermen, a lot of them have little boats like this one right here. And there's actually a harbor where we stayed a lot of times to get shelter from the weather or whatever. There are tenders, right? So basically a tender is a large fishing vessel and this large fishing vessel is hired by the cannery and what he does is he takes the fish off of all of the little vessels right that can't hold very much salmon so they'll actually put a hose into his fish hold that will go all the way up to the to the bigger fishing vessel right and they'll just they'll just suck all the salmon right out of right out of that little boat onto what's called the tender right so these fishermen that are on the tenders actually get hired for the summer from the cannery they make a daily wage and every day they will take the fish from the boats and then they will go in and sell to the cannery when they're full because all these all these little gill netters right here if if they had to go in every single day to offload their salmon it would take away probably half of their fishing time right so somewhere along the way they realize that if we put them on a bigger boat called the tender then we can keep fishing right so that is really really cool and actually the deadliest catch boats you know the the cornelia marie the time bandit we saw the the southern wind there was the saga so a lot of them actually get hired by the canneries as tenders for the summer but it was really cool to see those boats it was just really cool to be in the areas where they fish and alaska is just so full of all kinds of fishing and you know crab fishing salmon fishing here you can see a beach day that we had all right we're going on an excursion the grizzly bear was running from about right there all up the ridge and she went that way with the cub so we're gonna hope that she's not there anymore and we're gonna go ashore and see some cool stuff got a gun 
Garrett has his gold finder. It's gonna be awesome. And here's what some of our day's crab fishing looked like. And crab roof. Some days the weather was awesome. Some days the weather wasn't awesome. the weather actually the weather was not awesome on a number of different occasions but you just got to keep on keeping on right as I like to say put on your big girl panties and paddle
So now, here we actually have a load of crab and we're headed to King Cove. Now this is this is really interesting. I'd never quite experienced something like this before. So we were, we were going in, you know, we're, we're talking to the cannery about delivering and I asked the captain, how much are they paying? And the captain says to me, I don't know. And I said, how, how come you don't know? And he says, because they won't give us a price yet. And I'm like, how can they not give us a price yet? And he says, I don't know, but a lot of people have already delivered to them. And I'm like, what? What? As far as our crab were concerned in King Cove, the cannery had not given the, crab, the Dungeness crab fishermen a price yet for the summer, and people had already started to deliver. I'm like, dudes, what are you doing? What are you doing, dude? It's like, I'm gonna have a, a trailer full of stereos, and I go to you and I'm like, do you want these stereos? And you're like, yeah, yeah, we want them, we want them, but I don't know how much we're gonna pay you yet for them. I'm like, okay, here you go. Just let me know. And then when they give us a low price, it's like, hello, you know, you guys have already delivered. So I'm not saying, I'm not saying any more than that. Like, apparently this has been going on for a very long time in the fishing industry and it's something that needs to be remedied. I'll just say, but we were able to get the cannery to commit to a price before we offloaded, but that is not a normal thing sometimes. Anyways, it's a big discussion and I mean no disrespect to anybody. I just wish that we could band together somehow. So if anybody has any ideas about that, band together. We were, we were back to offloading crabs. So let's go back to King Cove. We have a load of crab. So we told him about how many crabs we had. So we get ready to go. But before we get into that, there's something really, really fun. And that is really funny, should I say. So this one particular cannery, what it does is when you, you pull your boat up to the cannery, right? They're gonna offload it and they're gonna weigh it over here. That's another story. But anyways, they, they weigh each tote of crab as it's coming off of your boat. Okay, we'll see that in just a second. So each tote of crab that comes off or each brailer, right, in some cases, they'll weigh it. Now, so the, then, they'll, then they have a screen that you can see on your boat, right? And it says brailer number one, Dungeness crab, you know, 900 pounds or 600 pounds or whatever it is. Well, what's funny about that is so many fishermen, you know, we think women are, are really gossipy, right? Well, men are just as bad, if not worse, right? But it's so funny to see fishermen be like, what did he, what did he get? What did he get? Hey, hey, how you doing? Hi. Oh, oh, really? He, he really you heard that he's catching that much? Oh, no way. Or anyway, so it's so funny to just watch the fishermen just kind of be looking, you know, they're looking to see who got what, who brought what, how much did he get? How much do they weigh? It's it's really funny. I've always um, compared fishermen going to unload as lifting up your dress because that's what happens. You know, as soon as you go to the cannery, it's like you're lifting up your dress and everybody can see what you got. Right. So I definitely thought that was funny, but here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna see the process of unloading the crab. Here we go. We have this big hatch cover on the top. We take this hatch cover off right here. We put it off to the side. Then the captain will drain all of the water out of the fish tank. And now time is a ticking because all of those crab are now what's called drying out, right? You wanna kind of unload them as soon as possible. So then the cannery sends what's called the offloaders down. The offloaders come on down and you can see them offloading the crab right here. And then they offload and then they weigh the crabs. Then you can see this crane craning over the crabs right here and they dump out the crab. And what's happening is the crabs in this particular case, in this cannery, are going onto a conveyor belt. Now the conveyor belt is actually going into what's called a butcher shop. That's actually what's on the building, butcher shop, right? Now I have a little bit of clandestine footage. I'm gonna try to sneak in here right now. Inside the butcher shop, you have a bunch of people with long apron bibs on, like butchers, right? And what happens is the crabs come down the conveyor belt live and they'll get the crabs like this and they'll smash them on the slicer. There's like a big ax like this, right? And so if you smash the crabs right like this, 
it kills the crabs instantly, which is actually a good thing, right? So they're not suffering at all. And then they'll clean the crabs and then they'll, I believe they'll send them down, you know, just what's called sections. So the two halves of the crab, no top shell, no guts, and it's cleaned, right? So that those sections are all ready to eat. So then they'll send them down the conveyor belt. And then from there, those sections get cooked and then the cooked sections get brined they, they go into some kind of like a saltwater brine this canner actually does a really good job of doing the brine the crab amazingly tastes almost as good as fresh so then they'll freeze the crab they'll box the crab and i don't know where it goes after that but that's basically the process of unloading and then what happens in the cannery now, if you're walking around any part of King Cove during crab season, you're definitely going to smell them cooking crab in town. And after we unloaded our crab, we actually went to town on the four wheelers and I smelled crab and I thought, oh my God, I've touched all those crabs that they're cooking right now. Isn't that weird? I thought it was pretty cool. So that was our episode today. What'd you guys think about that? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What were some of your favorite parts? I'm just here to share, you know, what our experience was like try to show you the best stuff the cool stuff all right so for crab fishing episode nine oh my god are we there yet are we there yet already crab fishing number nine here we go it's gonna be my dad coming into town good to see you Bob. yeah dad comes in he actually works on the boat with us we're about 570 right now 20. <laughs> thanks for coming out dad love you Oh, we saw some crazy animals. I'm going to show you guys the crazy animals that we saw out there. And I don't know what else, but it's going to be awesome. So stay tuned. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me. Don't forget to like. Bye. Check me out, I'm a floating crab. Got to put it in the trailer. Got to hurry up so much, cause these crabs are warming up. And my thighs will hurt me so much tomorrow. But that's okay, cause we got a little crab and it's alright today.